Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 63 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today, I am super excited. I can't even tell you guys, because I just spent an hour and a half coming up with a way to automate this thing. In a pretty compact manner. I'm not going to say it's perfectly compact, but it's pretty compact. And... It's awesome, and I'm super proud of it. There's only one problem. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to it in this episode. It may have to be next episode that we automate it. However, today's episode will be building the infrastructure that we need to automate the runic altar that I want. In the way that I want to automate it, in a nice and relatively compact fashion, where we don't need multiple runic altars, and we don't need multiple complex convoluted systems it's actually pretty straightforward the way i've gotten it to work and i'm a little bit hyped but i'm not going to tell you guys because i don't want to ruin the surprise <laughs> i'm so evil and i love it uh so what i will tell you is that one of the things that it's going to require is a mod that we haven't played with yet and there's a pretty good reason we haven't touched that mod. It's because it is very similar to another mod that we've based pretty much our entire item storage system on. That's right. Today we're going to get a little bit into Applied Energistics. Applied Energistics 2 um, was the precursor to systems like Refined Storage. In fact, Refined Storage was based off of Applied Energistics 1. Applied Energistics 2 came around and changed things up. And some people don't like Applied Energistics 2 because it's it's tricky to use. It's, it's complicated. There's complexity involved. I personally find the complexity of Applied Energistics 2 fun because you have to come up with interesting ways to solve the problems that Applied Energistics gives you. And that's cool for me. And that's a good time. And I like that. Um, you know, some people just want the simplicity that refined storage is. And that's cool, too. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, this is a sandbox game. And at the end of the day, you should be playing the sandbox game in a way. Oh, dude, that's crazy. Totally full. Uh, in a way that, um, you know, makes you happy, right? If, if you're having a good time, then you're doing it right, guys. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Cool. Look at you toggling on and off as needed. It's because of this stuff back here. It, it occurs to me that I haven't even come back here to check since my orb has filled up that this is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And apparently it is, so that's cool. Um, it's not what I would say super efficient. It could be more efficient because uh, it is toggling on and generating small amounts of power and it's just flipping on and off. And technically that's not the efficient way to run because you want the reactor to heat up for a few seconds and run at full efficiency. So we're probably being a little bit wasteful there. But what's my Eulorium situation? Eh, I've seen better days. Um, but that's okay. It's nothing. That's all right. Let's, let's, let's let you run for a minute. Because we could probably use some Eulorium. And we'll let that process. How is my storage doing? Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, I have F3H on. Turn that off. Don't need advanced tooltips on. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things. Um, but I was in my test world for literally an hour and a half. So if you see stuff like given direwolf, all this stuff, this was me testing in my test world. And for whatever reason, in Minecraft, the chat messages from one world come over to the other world. So let's, you know, not think direwolf was cheating in here. It was just a uh, test world. Honest to goodness. So these things are running. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Let's go uh, do some things that we're going to need to do. So to get started in Applied Energistics, uh, we're going to need the following. Uh, we're going to need to be able to craft some items. In particular, these items. Uh, printed logic circuits and engineering circuits. These things come from a device called an inscriber. In order to get those, you need engineering presses. Um, now, engineering presses, if you have one, you can make a copy of it. But if you check out the description here, you'll find that they're found in the center of meteorites, which are all around the world. And if you make a meteorite compass, you can go ahead and find one. So let's do that. Let's make a meteorite compass. You're going to need a piece of charged Sirtis quartz. Now, as you can see uh, in our fine storage system here, we've got some charged Sirtis quartz and some Sirtis quartz, both because I'm not processing the ores, like I didn't add it to my processing system. Um, but clearly, regular sort of quartz is far more common than charged, which, you know, cool beans. Uh, Eulorium, yeah, I'm not going to leave you running while I'm not here. 
Okay, but I wouldn't mind. Oh good, you guys are working hard. That's what I like to see. Do your jobs, everybody. Alright, let's go find a meteorite. Luckily, I happen to know exactly where the first one is that I want to find. This guy. Cool. Uh, now, here's how the meteorite compass works, right? While you're not inside of a chunk that has a meteorite in it, it's going to point to the nearest chunk with a meteorite. And you can see it kind of pointing over there, right? And it's it's pointing me towards that meteorite. Once you're in the chunk with the meteorite, then it's just going to spin, spin, spin. And that means you found where you want to be. Okay. So I'm going to dig down here. The very center of the meteorite, you should find a skystone chest. Ooh, and in there is skystone. And a logic press. Now, there are four presses to find. One, two, three, four. I don't know what this is. Inscriber name press? Beats me. No idea what that does, but it's a thing that exists apparently. So let's get out of this chunk. Now, I think it'll probably still want to point me back to that meteorite. So, like, just fly away for a few minutes, and hopefully, uh, what you'll find is another meteorite nearby. So, apparently, I'm lying. Nope, there we go. Off in this direction. Let's find a meteorite. Clearly, it's a good idea to do this once you've had some form of speed upgrade or travel upgrade system that you can make. Um, so you can get around faster, and flying definitely helps too. Whoa, hello. We're in the chunk. Is this the chunk? This is totally the chunk. So maybe it's under this lake. It should be here somewhere. In theory. Normally they're above ground. Hey, here we go. Skystone. Look, we found it. Sweet. I should have brought my 3x3 miner. That would have been way smart of me. But I didn't expect to find this underground. Hey, look, we even found some sort of sports ore. Skystone chest, where are you? It's usually right in the exact center of the meteorite. The problem is the chest looks like all the other skystone, which is just awful. And uh, makes for a challenging find. It's not a big deal, though, because if you break the skystone chest, you'll get the press out of it. So worst case, you break the chest, and then you're good. This sky stone, by the way, uh, you can make it into decorative stuff, you can grind it down, you can smelt it. There's a bunch of things you can use it for. Goodness, where is this thing? Uh, to do after I find... Here's what I'm going to do, because I want to do it now. Add new. Commit. Home. Drill. Nice. And then you can be removed. <laughs> Check that out. Smart dyer is smart. Yeah, this was the way to do it for sure. There it is. Skystone chest. Nice. Uh, so I got a duplicate of one I already had, but I did get a new one, so, you know. That's cool. Uh, we'll send these things home to be processed. And then I'm going to F3G out of this thing. And then I'm just going to fly around for a minute. Let's come back in a moment once I've found another meteor. Here we go. World's lagging just a little bit because I'm doing a bunch of world gen. Uh, hey, cool! Uh, of the four that I need, I found two that I already had, and zero that I didn't. Thanks, Skystone Chest. Back in a minute as I find another one, and generate the world and lag out the world. Alright, so this one was actually pretty tricky to find, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I had to dig, uh, several times. Here we go, Skystone Chest. Nice, I got a new one. Two of the ones I already had again, but finally got the third one. Alright. How many presses exactly do I need? I need four, right? I need the silicon press, and then I need calculation, engineering, and logic. I've got logic, engineering, and calculation, so I need silicon, which honestly is the most important one to have. So that's awesome. Um, let's get out of here. I'll show you. Uh, I literally had to dig down multiple times before I found the actual 
location that had the thing. The best trick to do is if you if you run into a spot where it's underground, if you notice that it's in two chunks, you know that it's probably along that chunk boundary, which is why I was digging like right around here, right near the chunk boundary, uh, hoping to find it, and I eventually did. It was a small one. They're different sizes, I noticed, is uh, something I noticed. Some of them are bigger than others, so cool stuff. All right, back in a minute, flying around again. And we're crossing our fingers. There we go, Skystone chest. Engineering press. Awesome. Thanks. And I got some lead nuggets, because that's something I need. I can't believe it. I got a logic, engineering, and calculation processing chest in this thing. But I've got zero silicon. I, I literally had everything except the one I needed in there. So that's hilarious. Thank you so much, Minecraft RNG. You are a pleasure to work with, and uh, I hope we can work again in the future sometime. That's a lie. I'd never want to work with the rain random number generator ever again. I hate you so much, random number generator. Stop being you. Victory is mine. Boom. With a logic press as well. Let's get out of here. Nice. So, now that we've got our presses... Finally, uh, we can start playing with applied uh, energistics and I can uh, turn this off and we can probably go down into our basement and figure out uh, where and how I'm going to build this thing. So I'm not going to build, obviously, a large, complex applied energistic system because honestly, I'm not switching from refined storage, at least not now. Maybe maybe just for the sake of, um, you know, future content so that you guys can see Applied Energistics fully fledged out. Maybe when we move to the Void Base, I'll switch to Applied Energistics from Refined Storage. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if you like that idea. Say, you know, yay or nay on Applied Energistics switching when we move to a Void Base at some point in the future, not necessarily soon. Um, but for now, it's really just it needs to exist so that I can have the basic foundations that I need to build the things I need to build for what will probably be next episode's build. Um, so, how do I want to do this? Normally, I've got access to a bunch of my stuff. Um, I don't think Applied Energistics and Refined Storage can talk yet. Um, I, I think they were talking about having that happen, but uh, we'll see. But for now, we're going to do the Applied Energistics Inscriber. Cool. Uh, so an Inscriber is a neat little device. Uh, applied Energistics Inscriber. Where'd you go? Uh, so I need two sticky pistons. Okay, uh, and then I need a Fluix Crystal. Now, a Fluix Crystal is not too hard to get. It is Redstone, Charged Certus Quartz, and Nether Quartz. And these three things have to be combined in water. So I need a bucket of water. Thank you. Cool. Um, hello, why is that guy here? What are you, what? What the... What? Is this thing on, by the way? Oh, yeah. Well, hello. How long have you been running? Probably several episodes now. So out of curiosity, what is my skull situation? Oh, I only have 1.1k wither skeleton skulls <laughs> when you accidentally leave on a system. <laughs> that is great. Uh, and I'm sure that... Come here, you. This thing has been dead for some time because I never did build any kind of automation for keeping that up and running. Uh, so you guys can go away. Uh, let's take you home to repair you. So it's probably been slowly but surely killing them. Wow. Over how many episodes now? Anyway, we have a lot of other skeleton skulls. Uh, let's go put you in the basement. Uh, maybe for now. Um, but you know what? I could teach my refined storage system how to make some of the things that we're going to need. Let's do that. Let's teach the refined storage system how to make the stuff that we need for applied energistics. Does that sound crazy? A little bit. We're going to do it though. Um, so I'm going to build something very similar to this down in my basement that's going to um, do this. So I'm going to want a ranged collector for sure. And we're going to want a dropper, because why not? And we'll want a crafter. 
Okay. And then we're going to want flux crystals. Um, okay, so you don't have the recipe in there, but we're going to have to get some. So one of you. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. One, two, three. Yields. Uh, let's find a spot for this. I could really use more basement area. Just uh, some space to auto craft in. Okay, nothing too fancy. Clearly, because it's me. I don't fancy things. It's right, I admitted it. I try. But I usually fail. Alright, so like here... And I'm going to take this thing out before I kill myself with it. Is... Where we will place our water bucket, right? And it's literally just drop one of each of these in here and you get... Hello. Nice. I think you get two of them. Yeah, two of them. Sweet. So we can teach that to our pattern system here. You. Encode that guy. Let's get some more blank patterns. To do... I remember I said I was going to set up that nether quartz auto-crafting? Yeah, that should be probably sooner than later, huh? Um, but that's fine. We'll take care of that. Hopefully today as well. Let's do that. Uh, so the crafter should be close to, if not already ready. Thank you. So you're basically going to be an actually additions dropper. We'll sit here. Okay. To drop into there. The crafter will sit there with some cabling here. Okay. And the pattern goes in there. Cool. Easy peasy. Uh, let's get some glass. Just because glass looks neat. Mana glass looks super neat. And I'm pretty sure mana glass gives off light. How cool is that? Right? Um, and then we can have... Here will be the range collector whitelisted on Fluix crystals. And then we're going to want an importer. Cool. And you can go away. Your crafting is in progress. Go ahead, buddy. Thank you. So you're whitelisted on the Fluix crystals. So now if I came over here and I said I need more Fluix crystals, let's say 10 of them. We're missing that. Okay, so let's say we need four of them. Start. I just need my Solangolia down here and then I'll be in good shape. Cool. And I think the one that I was using is still in my... Oh, cool, I have two of them. Nice. Always nice to have one of those. Do I have my lens? I'm curious if this will be sufficient. Yeah, I definitely need more nether quartz. And how I'm going to automate this was something that I talked about for last episode. Manually is obvious, obviously easy, right? And how are you guys doing on mana? Nice. Cool. So then we can put you guys away. And if I want more Fluix crystals, let's say four more of them. Good. Songoli is not affecting me. Awesome. And then once they immediately import into the system, and we're good. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So those are things that are now complete. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is automate the press guy, but we'll see about that. Uh, for now, let's come back in a sec. All right, so next things, next. Uh, Inscriber Press, 
Cool, this is the thing that we'll use to create stuff. Um, so again, remember how I was saying that, you know, refined storage and, and applied energistics are, you know, similar -ish mods. Um, you're gonna recognize some of the features and the way that you craft things. Uh, in applied energistics, you need to create um, logic circuits, which are a combination of printed silicon, printed logic circuit, and redstone makes a logic processor. This sounds familiar. Right? Uh, let's see, from refined storage, they're pretty much called improved processors. Cool, for, for this one. And it is gold, redstone, and silicon. Logic is the same deal, right? Logic processor is gold, redstone, and silicon, just with different presses. So um, the trick with these inscribers is that they are sided. So you have to pipe things into the correct side. Uh, and by that, I mean, if you wanna do, specifically when you're combining the three different types of uh, stuff, you, you need to take care of that. So let's actually get a couple more inscribers. I might want one inscriber per thing. So if I got pistons, did I ever teach you pistons? No, okay, well that was a mistake. And pistons. So we're gonna want five. So we're gonna in total want eight more so that we have our inscribers ready to roll as needed. Cool. Um, and then the inscriber system will be as such. Um, I'm going to do this with item conduits for the most part. And here's how it works, right? To inscribe things, we need to inscribe um, inscriber logic press, okay? Uh, which is going to be, so we want logic is gold, engineering is diamond, calculation is certus, right? I'm pretty sure it's just regular Certus. It has to be pure Certus Quartz Crystal. It won't take regular Certus Quartz. If it has to be pure, then we can manage that, but that's a nuisance. It has to be pure. Good times uh, are being had by everyone with that. Uh, and then Silicon. And then basically, we're going to want to craft each of these, right? So this will be the gold, this will be the diamond, this will be the pure certus, uh, and this will be the silicon, and then we combine a silicon, a piece of redstone, and one of these three to get the finalized product. So remember I said these things are a little bit tricky with their sidedness. So we're gonna see uh, what's up. So silicon press, can I export silicon into the bottom view by chance? We're gonna find out. Because what I'd like to do is just like keep this thing going. So if I put silicon here, would you see it goes in the wrong spot? The silicon actually needs to go here in order to craft. Um, so you're not doing what I'm going to want you to do. And I don't appreciate that. Cool. Uh, you get power that there. Uh, let's. So you're also going to need power. I think you can accept redstone signal. Um, if not, we're going to have to build a power acceptor, which isn't going to be a big deal. Nope. All right, so you're going to need power accepting. All right, so there's a couple places we're going to have to... I think we only need to hook up power at one point. Uh, so let's make a power acceptor. Energy acceptor, that's what it's called. Uh, for this, we're going to need quartz glass, uh, which needs Certus Quartz dust, uh, which if I crushed you, I get quartz dust. What's the sag mill do for you? 10% uh, chance of getting quartz dust. All right, so your best bet probably then would be just to drop this into a sag mill and that should get you what you need. Cool, good stuff. All right, and then 
That'll just keep like a bit in the system for now, and then we'll maybe make more later if we need. So energy acceptor, that's going to accept power for, um, it's basically the, the power system that applied energistics needs. And then we're going to see about, so if I popped down here, if I just had the energy acceptor, let's say here, would you be able to power and then also share power with all your friends? No nearby tower pile. Really? No nearby tiles? So let's say that we had a conduit. Because that's a tile. Energy conduit should be fine. These guys shouldn't draw more than, you know, a bit. Cool. So you're getting power. Are you going to get power? You are. Look at that. Cool. So that's all we need to do to get power into this thing. Nice. And that makes me my printed silicon. Now, putting it in here, it doesn't work. It has to go in there. So that's cool. Um, and it looks like, do these stack now? They do. Well, that's fancy. I like that. All right, cool. Um, now, I'm pretty sure on the input side, you can only have one. So what we're going to want to do is tricky. Because I need to access the same side, and I also want to kind of make this look cool. Um, but we have to do the side of this one. And his sides are touching this thing. We're going to have to both insert and extract from the side. I don't think... Can I do this by chance? Uh, not you. So if I set you to extract always active and you to insert, would you by chance be able to... No, you stole the inscriber silicon press. See? Sidedness. Hilarious. Um, totally need to extract from the sides of this thing. So that if we want to do what I want to do, we're going to need to do this, right? Extract green, always active, and insert. Cool. And that extracted one of the printed silicons and put it in the middle. So that actually needs to, and this is the worst part, um, go under here and this be the insert. Yes, that's what we need. Cool. Well, I can't demo that again without, I guess I could throw one silicon in there. And that will extract it. So what I'm probably going to do for this is a phantom face, just so I can hide this. So regular old phantom face, start that crafting process up. See, printed silicon gets in there. So that's neat at least. Be right back. So what I'll probably do is bind, what is it, this guy to this guy. And then we can export bus into the side of this thing. Silicon. And that should do that, okay? And then we can do this, and look how nice and neat that looks, okay? So what it'll do is it'll put the printed silicon in there, and it'll make more silicon, and this will slowly make about a stack of it. Cool. Um, I might also, because I'm gonna need to tap into the side of this guy as well, uh, for redstone we have to get into there, so I might make another phantom face real quick. And we'll put, an exporter on that for redstone. How's that sound? Cool. I love hearing the automation that I set up in past episodes just kick off. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to craft a phantom face. And then, zzz, and it's all good, right? Love it. Um, so we'll put another phantom face here. We'll bind this guy to it. And then we can export bus redstone. And that should put it in this side. Cool. Now the only thing we have to do is get things into the top which is neat uh, and easy-ish. Um, so what we'll want to do then is um, we're going to basically put the raw materials in this chest for the crafting parts. So we'll have a crafter underneath the chest, which I totally made and probably didn't take out of here yet. There it is. Cool. All right, and then we'll say, give me gold and you're gonna automatically get out the gold thing because redstone, we don't have to feed it, and silicon, it's gonna have automatically, right? So gold equals completed printed logic circuit. So how that's gonna work is we're gonna do item conduits, right? And we're gonna do these three here, and we're gonna extract 
green always active. You're going to be insert green, you're going to be insert green, and you're going to be insert green. And I'll probably have to filter these. So let's get some filters going on. Do, 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 do. Okay. Paper check. And what we'll do is we'll do gold. Let's make sure we have the items we need on us. Gold and diamond for now. Uh, so this was gold. We have to get pure certus going, which we'll probably have to do next episode because we're getting close. Uh, you're going to be disabled for now, right? So what that's going to be is, so that'll extract on green. It'll put it in there. It'll craft it. And then we're going to want to extract it on the same side, right? So we're going to extract on brown, always active. And you're going to be the same. Extract on brown, always active. Cool. Um, and then whatever you extract is going to wind up going into the top of this inscriber, right? Which happens to be right here, okay? So you're going to be disabled, right? You'll wind up going into the top of this inscriber. And then here we can extract on blue, always active. And you down there will be insert on brown. Okay, so what'll happen is gold comes out of the chest on the green channel, it goes into here, it gets turned into whatchamacallit, uh, I can find it this way. It gets turned into this thing, the printed logic circuit, which is extracted on brown, and then makes its way into the phantom face, which is bound to the top of this thing. It gets squished down into this, and then extracted on blue, an extract blue will wind up going to like an interface, let's say. Not a fluid interface, a regular interface. Start that crafting. And we'll put that like right under here. How's that sound? Come on, crafting, let's go. And we'll demonstrate this in a sec, right? So interface here and then the down will be insert on blue okay so that's all well hidden and i think that's pretty neat between phantom faces and everything that's pretty cool right so watch when i put gold in this chest it's going to stamp it then it's going to immediately extract it and it's going to wind up over here and it's going to craft it and it's going to immediately extract it and then my piping is going to automatically refill my redstone and silicon and then Logic circuit should be in here. Cool, cool, cool. Diamond in this chest will go here. And then here. And then we're good. By the way, we can put speed upgrades on this thing if, if, if we feel that it's too slow. But how cool is that? All right. So wrapping up point. Uh, we'll come back next episode and we'll do some more. Uh, the next things we'll need to work on are... pure sword certus so that we can do this thing and then we're going to work on the next part of the build which is going to i think we've got enough infrastructure short of the pure certus and then we'll hopefully be able to automate this guy next episode for now dial 20 signing off hope you enjoyed the episode for now take it easy <laughs>